All right, this is, uh, this is an oldie. It's an oldie where I come from. Hi, and welcome to Rudy's Movie Reviews, San Antonio's official movie critic. Today, guys, we are going to go old school, back to the 80s, my favorite decade, the decade I grew up in. We are going to be going back to 1986, August 8th, 1986, and we're going to be talking about Transformers the movie. Believe it or not, this week marks the 30th anniversary of the Transformers the movie. I can't believe that. I truly can't. To me, I remember it as if it were yesterday. I truthfully do. Uh, I remember seeing the movie, I remember going back to school, and my friends and I just looking at each other, just like, hey, did, did you see it? Messed up, right? That's gotcho style. I don't know what that meant, but that's what we said back then, it's gotcho style. But, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that summer in 86 and how it really made an impact on me, and I'm sure every other boy and girl who were fans of the Transformers cartoon series, and really the lasting effect it had on me as an adult right now. So let's go ahead and get started. Cue the cool intro. Now, 1986, everybody, was a big deal in movies. If you didn't know, a lot of the, our classics that we hold dear today came out that summer. So let's go ahead and go from the very beginning up until August 8th, okay? Let's go through the list. The summer started off in May with Top Gun. Top Gun ruled the box office and did for many, many months. And we all know the impact Top Gun has to this day. We all, most of us can quote that movie by heart. Then followed Stallone's Cobra, believe it or not. <laughs> yep, there we go, Cobra. Then we had invaders from Mars. Then Space Camp. You remember Space Camp, right? Friends forever. Friends forever. Then we have Flight of the Navigator. Then we have Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School, which is a personal favorite of mine. I love Rodney Dangerfield. One Crazy Summer, Stand By Me, and then Transformers the Movie. So it's pretty funny, right? A lot of the movies in 1986 we we love them to this day. A lot of those are kind of classics. I still I have those Blu-rays, so it's amazing. And I remember when Transformers the movie came out. I remember seeing the trailer because Transformers had already been out two seasons. And as a kid, Transformers was on when we came home from school about four o'clock. And this is before Cartoon Network, my young viewers, if there are any out there. We had no Cartoon Network. We got home. We had at the most from three o'clock to five o'clock of TV time. The rest belonged to mom and dad and World News and then their shows and, and uh, whatever they were watching. So we only had two hours of television. And if you missed Transformers or G.I. Joe that afternoon, you were screwed. You had to wait till it rerun. And that could be months at a time. So if you missed it, you missed it and you were screwed because everybody at school is going to be talking about it the next day. And if you didn't know anything about it, you're going to be like, damn it, I didn't see that. So. FYI, we only had two hours of cartoons and you saw it after school. So then the movie comes out, right? There's a trailer, we're all excited because the animation really was a step up from what we saw in the cartoons, right? So when the movie comes out, there's a little hint within the trailer. The voice said this. Transformers, the movie. It's Prime. Does Prime die? Does Prime die? What the hell is he talking about, this Prime die? I didn't get what he was talking about. We go. The movie comes out. I remember initially it was tough to find a theater that showed the movie because most theaters in San Antonio at the time, you really had to go far. I mean, all we had was the um, Santico Century Plaza. And the movie starts. And what do we get? We get an eerie planet, this huge thing devouring a planet of millions of people and eating them alive. And I remember seeing him chomp away and just eating everybody. I'm like, what the hell am I seeing? There's people dying in here. There were kids just a second ago within that shot. Everyone's dead. I'm like, holy crap. That freaked me out as a kid. I was nine years old when it came out. So then the credits started. Then we get this cool intro. Save the sky. 
Transformers. Now the soundtrack's pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie, I have it on my workout list. It's an awesome, awesome soundtrack. And if you didn't know by chance, uh, Vince DiCola did the instrumental keyboard music for the movie Transformers in 1986. But he did a previous movie last year, you may know it as Rocky IV. And I don't know if you've known the difference or the similarities between the two, but let me go ahead and play Drago's entrance as he walks in with the lighting and smoke in the background. Take a listen. Okay, pretty timeless, right? Now let me play Unicrons. Pretty much the same, right? Yeah, I, I remember catching that a few years ago, like I was a teenager at the time. I'm like, holy, that doesn't sound like Drago's entrance? I'm like, wow. Let me look that up. And then I found out Vince Nicola did the music and more or less used the same sheet, I guess. I don't know. But I don't know if you knew that, but I thought I'd throw that at you. If you don't like it, just send it right back. Then the cartoon starts. We have laser beak spying on the Autobots. We have that voiceover. It's 2005, man. They were way off, weren't they? But it was pretty cool to see Laserbeak, Optimus, Prowl, everybody that I was familiar with. Like, hey, that's, that's my cartoons right on the freaking movie screen. I was really excited. But I remember having a sense of fear because a planet ate a planet. So I remember having that fear like, oh my God, like this guy's probably going to come. They're going to have to fight him. I don't know what's going to happen. So the movie starts and of course they're always low on energon cubes and, you know, reserves and things like that. So they, they're getting ready to launch. So I'm like, okay. This is pretty cool. This is what I'm used to. Let's see what happens. And then we get Megatron's attack on the Autobot ship. Holy systems in their own shuttle and destroy Autobot City, the Autobots will be vanquished forever! No! Such heroic nonsense. Yeah. They were killed. <laughs> Brawn, Prowl, Ironhide, in the face! Megatron shot him in the face at the end. I'm not gonna lie, to this day, it's still in my mind how I felt when I saw that. I was completely shocked. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This, for me, was the first time anything I was attached to emotionally as heroes and friends from cartoons. But these are toys that I had and loved playing with that are being killed on the screen. And as a kid, I remember sitting there and having a sense of I'm terrified because one, we just had Unicron eat up a whole planet with millions of people and get chopped up and eaten away. Now we have Megatron and Starscream who just killed four of my favorite Transformers. And of course we know what happens after that. Megatron and everybody go, they invade Autobot City, there's a huge battle, and then we have the coolest animation sequence of all time with Optimus Prime going in the battle. It must be stopped, no matter the cost. <laughs> 
So of course, after that clip, we're all pissed off at Hot Rod. No, you don't, Megatron. Out of the way, Hot Rod. <laughs> then the sequence is this: we have the death scene. The death scene to this day, if you look on YouTube, there's it's posted by hundreds and hundreds of people, and you can read the comments and you can see how this scene impacted thousands, if not millions, of fans, boys and girls who were fans of the Transformer scene. This was our hero. This was the Autobot leader. Some say I've read articles that he was a father figure. This is him dying on screen. I can't explain that. I really can't. How can I relate it to you? If Pikachu were to get killed, shot up multiple times and die in bed and then turn from yellow to gray and then have a, an animated child weeping over him, crying and not come back, mind you. We were all thinking, no, as a kid, he's not going to die. He's going to come back. They're going to revive him. They're going to charge up his batteries, give him like a, a crap load of Energon cubes and he's going to wake up. You just watch. And he never came back. He never did. The entire movie you were waiting, we're waiting. It didn't happen. So anyway, the movie is over, right? What happens? Uh, Hot Rod takes over. He's got the Matrix of Autobot leadership. Uh, Ultra Magnus was put back together. And I remember when he was put back together, I was like, what the hell? Go get Prime, rub that crazy liquid on him, shine him up, put him together, and Prime will be all right. They'll bring him back just like Ultra Magnus, right? Right, right, right? It didn't happen. Anyway. I go back to school and I remember walking in and seeing my friends and just like, hey, did, did you see Transformers the movie? And they were like, yeah. And we didn't know what to say, to be totally honest. I remember we're just kind of like talking about it like a friend of ours died. I remember uh, some guys were sad, some guys like, a, like were taking it hard. It was weird. I can't explain it because it really wasn't a real death, but it was the first death we witnessed as children. So I guess from... My standpoint, and I'm sure many people can relate to this, this was our first introduction to losing someone, losing something, and having to move on. Things that we held dear to our hearts being taken away, and then being introduced to new friends, new toys, whatever. If anything, that's what that movie taught me, how, how to deal with loss. If that's too corny and over the top, I, I'm sure it sounds that way, but this movie really taught me how you can move forward and there's life after that loss. I mean, look at me, I'm 39 years old talking about a cartoon movie in 1986 that I remember just like it was yesterday it happening. I can't explain it, but it's there. We all hold things here in our childhood, whether it be a movie, a place, a lake, fishing trips, a beach, whatever. There's always things we hold dear and memories that we hold sacred. Just because it's gone doesn't mean it's never gone. It's always there inside of you. And I also think it's a stamp of our childhood from my generation. Um, Anybody with my age or around my age remembers that summer going back to school and to this day, how it impacted them. So this is a big deal and a fingerprint of our childhood. And um, it's a timeless classic. In closing guys, thank you for watching Rudy's Movie Reviews, San Antonio's official movie critic. FYI, a Blu-ray 4K edition of Transformers the Movie, the 30th anniversary edition, is going to be coming out September the 13th. So be on the lookout for that. I'm, I know I'm going to get my copy as soon as it arrives, just to see it in all its glory in Blu-ray format. 
But thank you for watching, guys. I truly appreciate you watching. Uh, please, again, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my channel. Uh, just let me know that you're interested and you like what you're seeing. If you like the background, I'm changing it up a bit. I'm moving things around, messing with the lighting. I'm learning as I go. And I am aware of the mic. I am working on audio improvements. So just FYI on that. I really appreciate all the feedback and the input you guys are giving me. Have a good day. Take care. And God bless.